So moving along in this video, we're going to be working on the why choose us section. So let's head over to our index.html and get started. So to begin, let's go ahead and create our comment and we're going to have it say why. Now we need to go ahead and create our section right here and we're going to give this a class of why as well. Now to begin, we're going to go ahead and create a div with a class of container. And inside of this container, we're going to have an H2 and it's going to say why uh, choose us. Now, after this, we need to create our first flex row. So this right here where we have all these cards, again, will be a flex row. So let's go ahead and create that. And in that flex row, we're going to have three different columns. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create this. So we're going to say div.flex row. And we're also going to give this a class of write uh, dash up. So we could go ahead and just um, style the flex row up based on the Y section. We could say, you know, we could alter our flex row properties within this section, but we will be having two flex rows. So the easiest way that I found to do this is to create a secondary helper class and put those classes that we want to style the flex row on, on this one. And I spelled right up wrong. Let's go ahead and change that. Okay. So inside of our write up row or our flex row here, we're going to have three columns. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and create one of those columns and then I'm going to copy and paste that markup in to save some time. So we're going to start by having a div with a class of column. And inside of here, we're going to have an I or an icon or an I tag. And this one's going to be a pencil. Now below this, we want to have our heading. So this is going to be design forward. Uh, forward there we go and then we're gonna have some paragraph text here I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this in I don't want to type all of this out let's go ahead and grab that and paste this in right here and as I did with the previous section with services I will go ahead and leave the content down below in the description so that way you don't have to pause and type all of this out okay next up and finally you want to put a span and we're gonna have this say read more okay and then for the rest of the columns, I'm going to simply go ahead and copy and paste these in to save some time. So right below this column, I'll go ahead and copy and paste these other two columns in. So if we take a look on our uh, live document here, we will have this. So let's head back to our markup here and begin to do the second column. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this flex row here to save some space. Now below our flex row, we're going to create another flex row. So we're going to say div dot flex row, and we're going to give this the class of analytics. There we go. Okay. Now inside of this flex row, we're also going to have columns. So we're going to go ahead and do div dot cow. And inside of this column, we're going to have two spans. So the first span will have a class name of number, which will have a number in it. So we're going to say 274 for this one. And then for the other span, we're going to give this class or the span a class of title. And we're going to call this clients. There we go. And let's go ahead and capitalize this C. So once again, to save time, I'm going to go ahead and copy in the additional rows because they're all the same. And let's go ahead. I mean, all the columns because they're all the same. So as you can see, for the next one, we have 421. And this is going to be a project. Hours of support, 1364. Hard workers, and 18. So that is the markup for our Y section. So it is. it looks a little bit lengthy, but it is just a lot of repetitive markup. Uh, not really repetitive, but it's the same markup. So it looks a lot more chaotic than it actually is. And it is very simple and straightforward. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. As you can see, it's all, you know, obviously has no styling. So let's go ahead and fix that by adding some styling to this section. So to begin here, let's go ahead and start off with our comment. We're going to go ahead and say Y, and then let's go ahead and open up our Y class down here. So for this section, we're going to also have a background color, but this one's going to be 004A99, which is a darker blue. And we're also going to set the color to everything in this section to be white, which is going to be all the font color. So that's all going to be white for the entire section. Okay. Now to target our H2 and our H3, we're going to go ahead and put 
this color as well to white because if you recall we went ahead and set that color up here to be 444 and then I believe the H2 was another color so we need to go ahead and specifically address that in here and set the color to white and then we also want to text align this to the center moving along here for our flex row we want to do a margin top of 60 pixels and then a gap of also 60 pixels all right so now we want to specifically start to target this flex row of right of so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our class down here for uh right up and inside here we're going to start with a margin of zero auto and then we want to do a max width of 600 pixels so this is going to look very similar to how we did our grid in the previous section and then we want to do another property of flex direction and set this to column by default because right now it's set to a row and then let's go ahead and add our media query here for our desktop and uh, laptop and tablet and we're going to set this to a min width of 900 pixels and once to get to that height, we want to set the max width to 100% and then a flex direction back to row. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, you probably won't see much difference besides the color. And now we have our flex row defined a little bit up here. So things still need to be uh, styled up. So let's go ahead and continue on. So inside of this write-up we have columns so let's go ahead and specifically style those columns so we're going to go ahead and target our call here and we want to display these as flex we want to set the flex direction of these two columns we want to align the items in here to the center we want to set these to be a flex of one we'll go ahead we'll go ahead and put a cursor of pointer on here so when you hover over it it has a cursor of a pointer we're going to add a padding around all sides of 40 pixels, a border radius to add a slight roundness to each of the sides of 12 pixels, and then a background color of 00458F, which is going to be a little bit of a darker blue compared to this, I believe. It may be lighter. Let's go ahead and take a look. I believe it's just a little bit lighter, so that way it kind of stands out just a little bit. And we want to text align this to the center and then do a transition here of 500 milliseconds ease all because we will be putting a hover effect on this column. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how this is turning out. So right now you can see we have a background color on here that's a little bit, um, I would say, darker or just enough to make it pop and make a noticeable difference even though it is still blue. We have around rounded corners and now it is in a flex direction of a row. And what is, okay, the read more is down there. It's just not separate. I thought I forgot to go ahead and do that. So let's continue on here. So on the hover, when we hover over these, you wanna go ahead and change a few things. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll get our hover property out here. And inside of here, we wanna change the background color to 003B7A, okay? And then we also want to target the span. So we want to target the span and hover to have a border bottom of two pixels solid and then change that border color or make that border color a blue of 004899. So right now, if we go ahead and take a look at this, when we hover over it, you'll see we have this line up here underneath the read more. And now we have this very smooth transition of a different color blue to go ahead and look like that one is selected. So that is all looking great. So next up, let's actually target the span. So let's go ahead and do this outside of the column. So we're gonna say span. And we wanna give this a max width of 100%, a margin top of auto to push it to the very bottom, a padding on the bottom of four pixels, and then a border bottom here of, you know what, let's actually go ahead and do this. So we're just going to simply copy this right here. I did this wrong and this is gonna be some refactory and I, I can just see off the top of my head while I'm doing this, is we're gonna set a border bottom of two pixels solid and we're gonna set this color to be 
transparent here. And then all we're going to do for the span inside the hover is change the border color to that blue, which was 004A99. So that was something I caught that I had done in the actual live version that we could have just went ahead and avoided. So we're going to have the border on there the whole time, which we were going to anyways, but now we're just going to change the color of the border when we hover over it. So if I go back to this, it still should, uh, why is it doing that? Two pixels, solid, transparent, hover. And let me go ahead and refresh it. That shouldn't be doing that. Why is that? Um, Hmm, it should be transparent here. Let me go ahead and take a look at why this is not working here. Oh, you know what? I know why. It's because the span's not inside of the hover. We need to go ahead and nest that in the hover. Otherwise, it's going to do no good. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now. And there we go. I was wondering why, and that makes sense. So we want to nest our span tag on hover, or we want to, so when we hover over, we want to make sure that we do this code inside of the hover property here. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. All right. So moving along here, we're going to target our eyes. So let's go ahead and do that. And we want to do this. Um, we can do this inside of the column as well. So below, let's see right here. Um, we'll do this right here. So in our eye, we want our eye tag. We want to make the font size be 50, oops, not 60, 50 pixels. Okay. And then for our H3 here, we want to give this a margin of 16 pixels on the top and bottom and zero on the left and right. And then for our paragraph tag, we want to go ahead and set this to a font size of 14 pixels and then also a margin bottom of 32 pixels. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Our card should now be complete. And there we go, things are looking great. So when we set the margin top to auto on the span, it's gonna push that to the very bottom so that these all look congruent and we don't have the read more like up here and up here so they're all in uh, a vertical or horizontal line at the bottom, okay? So that is it for our columns up here. Let's go ahead and work on these down here now. So let's head back to our style sheet here and I'm going to go ahead and close up this right here for the write up so we can work on the analytics one. So for this, let's go ahead and target our analytics class here. So A and A analytics. All right. And inside of here, we're going to set a flex direction of column because mobile first approach. We're going to set a margin top of 90 pixels. We're going to justify the content to space evenly and then we want to align the items to the center, okay? And then we're gonna add a media query here and we're gonna set this one to a min width of 700 pixels and we're gonna set the flex direction to a row once it gets to there. So if we take a look now, these should be all spaced evenly, which they are and it looks great. Uh, now let's go ahead and actually do some styling to our span tags here. So let's go ahead and do that. So. First thing we want to go ahead and do is for our span tags, because right now they're on the same line, we can go ahead and resolve that by displaying these as block and then text aligning the spans to the center so that they are centered uh, between one another. And then for our number class or for our span of number, we want to go ahead and style this up. So let's go ahead and do number here. And we want to make this font size a lot larger. So we're going to give it a font size of 50 pixels. We're gonna give it a font weight of 600 to be a little bit thicker, and then a margin bottom of 10 pixels, okay? And for our title, we're gonna make this a little bit smaller, and we're gonna give this a font size of 14 pixels, okay? And that should do it for this section. Uh, lastly, what I wanna go ahead and do before we even head to look at it is we need to add our Y section to our padding here for uh, this section. So let's go ahead and do that. And that should be all set. So if you look at this now, it looks great. We have everything looking just as the demo does. So that is going to do it for this section. Next up, we are going to be working on the photo gallery, which I'm really excited for. It's something I think is probably the coolest part of this site because we're going to be using the grid to make it look a little staggered. Normally you see photo galleries, they're all even. So 
we're going to be using Grid to create this customized photo gallery. So we'll be doing that in the next video.